Alright guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be just taking a quick look at how to make a pause system for your game so that you can uh, pause the gameplay at any time and have a nice little menu overlaying your game. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Actually there's a million ways you can do this and it really depends on what's most suited to the game that you're making. But uh, I'm going to cover two specific methods. I'm going to do a video for each one. Um, the first method I'm going to cover is going to be probably by far the simplest um, uh, for just doing like an overlay in your game uh, that just says game paused and uh, you can do whatever menu stuff you like to do on it. Um, it has weaknesses but I'll explain those as I go on but this method's really really simple to set up. So the first thing we're going to do is create uh, an object to manage our pause menu. Let's go into objects, insert object, and call it obj underscore pause, seems obvious enough right? And we're going to make it persistent so that this object carries over from room to room. And basically we're going to create this object in our initialize event and it's just going to come with us in, in, in every room of our game so that we can use it wherever. Uh, first thing we're going to do is go into the create event for this pause object, drag in some code, and we're just going to establish a, a global variable that every every object in your game can read um, no matter what, so I'm going to say global.pause equals zero and that's the variable we're going to use with all our other objects to check to see whether the game is paused and whether or not they should still be running at any point in time. Uh, then we're going to add an event for when the user presses escape, so we're going to go to our key press and where are the others? Escape. We'll use the escape button and I'm going to drag a piece of code into here and very simply, this is just going to toggle that global variable on or off. So I'm just going to say if global, if I can type today, pause equals zero, global dot pause equals one. Uh, else, global dot pause equals zero. Simple as that. So that we can turn this variable on and off, and then in the draw event, what we're going to do is we're going to basically draw an overlay when the game is paused so that, you know, like we're going to just dim the screen a bit and just write game paused. I'm just going to keep it super simple. So I'm just going to do a bunch of uh, draw lines here and you'll see what they all do. If global.pause, so assuming that variable is on and our game is paused, this is the stuff we want to draw with our, our pause object. So I'm going to say draw, set, underscore color, C underscore black. So we're going to set our drawing color to black and we're going to set draw set alpha. I'm going to set the alpha, that's the transparency of what we're drawing right now, to uh, 0.5, so about 50%. So at the moment, anything we would draw to the screen would be drawn in the color black and it will be drawn at half transparency. Uh, and so what we're then just going to do is draw a rectangle with draw rectangle. Um, and then the coordinates for this are obviously going to be from the top left of our room to the bottom right. So it's going to be from 0, 0 to room width, room height. Depending on your game, you might want to do like uh, coordinates relative to your view as opposed to relative to the room, but we don't, you know, our view is the size of our room here, so we don't really need to do that. Uh, and 0 for outline. Draw, set, right, and we're going to just set some alignment tools for the text that we're going to draw to the screen, just so that we draw the text perfectly in the center. Uh, we're going to say draw, set, hline, fa underscore center. Uh, draw, set, font, because I've already set up a font because the default font in Game Maker looks horrible. fnt underscore menu. Uh, that's, again, just referencing the font that I've set up in the, uh, the resources over there, fnt underscore menu, it's just an aerial, just aerial font, simple. Draw set color, c underscore white, because we want to show it, it show up well on the background. Draw set alpha back to one, and draw underscore text, room underscore width, divided by two, uh, and then we want to draw it. Yeah, so the coordinates we're going to be using for the text are just going to be the middle of our room. So the room width divided by 2 is you know halfway into the room. And room height over 2 is the same thing vertically. And we're just going to put game pause as the string. Uh, 
And then just in, you know, just set our draw, set color back to our sort of default of C underscore black. Um, just in case it would interfere with any other objects that are using draw and assume black as the default, etc. So that's all we need for that, and we'll see that that already works now if we run it. Oh, actually, we need to actually put it in. We're going to put it in our initialize room. Um, we're going to do that because when our other objects um, are checking to see if the game is paused later, they want to know that that global variable already exists. So we want to make sure that object underscore pause was made before any of our other objects in the room. So I'm just going to plunk ubg underscore pause in our initialize room. Um, our initialize room from a previous tutorial just has code to... Um, do some stuff with our checkpoints, but also just uh, go to the next room. So, like, it's just going to create that object, make sure it's created before everything else, and take us through to our first room. And then I'm going to run the game. And as you can see now, if I press escape, we get this game paused overlay coming up. And, and even when I die and restart the room, the game pausing is still there because it's, it's persistent. But as you can see, nothing is actually pausing yet. So now that's what we're going to do. It's really quite simple. All we're going to do is go into every object or every parent object, at least, that um, moves in some way or does something in its step event that is um, repeating every frame. And we're just going to basically bypass all the code, assume if pause is on. It's a really simple, dirty way of doing this. It's actually pretty much exactly the system that's used in my game and other perspective, um, because it just worked. Like the game was simple enough that this method actually worked out pretty well and didn't cause any problems. I'll explain some of the issues you can run into with this system later. But it's very good if you're prototyping or you just you know, want to get a quick pause system in. If global dot pause, so assuming that pause variable is on then exit. Now what that uh, exit function is going to do is it's literally just going to exit out of this entire event. Um, you can also use it in scripts and things just to exit out of the script that you're currently ex executing. It's a pretty cool function like that. Um, so basically um, the player now is just going to see this and um, uh, at the very start of its step event and if the global pause is on because of the pause thing it's just going to quit the step event and it's not going to do any of this stuff for that frame. And we're just going to take that line and we're going to copy and paste it into our enemy object step event and into our moving platform step event. And we don't need to put it in our enemy no fall from our over this tutorial because that's just a child object of object enemy, so it will inherit that. And now we should see. Run the game. Press escape, game paused, everything is paused. Well, sort of. You'll notice that these things are still rotating around, and I left that on purpose, because you might not necessarily want everything in your game to stop moving when you've created this overlay. You, you might want to, you know, just have some, you know, the background still going on, but the game is paused. Like, time is sort of frozen-ish. Like, it can kind of create a nice effect sometimes. It, it's up to you and what you want to do with your game, really. But I just wanted to demonstrate that it is possible to then keep some things moving in the background if they're not really relevant to gameplay, like these rotating checkpoints and so on and so forth. And it depends what you're doing. Like I said, I'm just highlighting that as a, a potential and opportunity of this system. So as you can see, yeah. That works. Works for both those enemy types. I can't. I can't move while that's happening. If I jump and pause, you know, it's all. It all works. So yeah, that is a pause system. Um, it does involve going into basically all the objects you want to manage with this and uh, just checking global pause. But it does add a really simple way in your game to just check that condition at any time if pause is on or if it's not. And it's very easy to set up in your pause event um, to say things like press escape. Oh, and if we're in this certain room then don't work or so on and so forth or uh, uh, um, like just add other things into this uh, if statement or whatever that just say like oh under these conditions we cannot pause and so on and it makes it really manageable and easy to work with if you're just you know prototyping you're building your game um, and it's a really cool system. The problem, some problems or bugs you can run into by doing it like this are things like alarms um, you have to be a bit careful with alarms doing a system like this because obviously we're pausing the step event of our objects but the object is still there and its alarms are still ticking down so if you and when they reach zero they're still gonna go off and happen I mean you can make it so that the events of the alarm you could write an if statement to say like oh if 
uh, pauses on and don't carry out, but then you still run into problems of like it's ticking down, so you could pause the game, wait for an alarm to tick all the way down, and unpause the game, and then the alarm thing would happen, which wouldn't you know, wouldn't necessarily be optimal. And there's a few kind of ways you can work around that with the system, but really, if you've got alarms and stuff like that, all those kind of problems, chances are you just want to use a, a different system for pausing your game. But uh, <laughs> to not just leave you with that tease of saying, oh, I've shown you this system, it might not work for your project, I will... The next video I'll be doing will be covering another method for doing pause stuff that involves sort of deactivating instances and reactivating them. It's a more common, commonly used one probably in the long run, but this one, I really love this system and wanted to explain it just because it's a really, really quick, efficient way of just like saying, oh quick, I need to do something to pause the game quick and then be able to throw it in because like, it's one of Game Maker's strengths is being able to create effects and stuff like that very quickly and simply. So I hope you enjoyed that, more stuff on pausing the game will be coming very soon, and I'll catch you guys next time. See you dudes!